But yeah, I figure if I catch up on it this weekend, then all I have to do is wait for next Friday, which would be the end. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, because I started watching. Uh, they they're doing. Uh, well, I just switched mainly because of the Twitch feed because the Sox guy that I'm watching to get into the playoffs for the the show thing. Uh, he's like right on the cusp, but his last game he's already played. But they're gonna air it on ESPN tomorrow. And because I have Sling, the package I had didn't have that ESPN, so I switched it so I could watch that. But because of that, I'm watching the uh, um, 10-part Michael Jordan documentary that they put together on ESPN. Kind of interesting because I remember, like, I was, how old was I when that came out? I mean, I would have been 12 when they won their last championship. And I, I barely remember much of it besides Michael Jordan being, like, the best thing ever and everybody wanted to be like Mike. But like going back and rewatching it, it's it's really interesting. That dude is still still one of the greatest athletes, and I'm not like not basketball. I'm saying athletes. There was a uh, this um, like yeah, he played baseball and he wasn't that great. You know what? That's not really true because so his first year, so he hadn't played for ten years or whatever it was since high school. Yeah. And in double A, he stole like 30 bases and batted like 200, which isn't good. But during fall league, he batted like 240. Damn. So if if he would have kept going, I don't know if he would have ever made it to the major leagues at that point. But if he would have started at a young age, like basically he chose baseball instead of basketball, he probably would have. He wouldn't have been like the Michael Jordan we know, but he would have been decent. Well, I guess I'm saying that like. You know, somebody that was that competitive and like rose to the top of his field in a sport and to take that and transition into a completely different sport and still like be competitive and still. Yeah. And still be competitive at some uh, at 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 the higher levels of that sport. Like, what the fuck? I mean, he only I thought he played longer than he did, but it was only like one season. Because then he came back to the NBA after it was like 18 months. I think he took off, Mm -hmm. which a lot of people say is because I don't think this is true, but they said that his dad was murdered by like sports bookies kind of thing, like mafia. And so they made him take that time off from basketball. I don't believe that, but that was always the the theory of why he left. All right. Greatest basketball player that ever lived. Ang. Dick What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And today, we're speaking the language of bromance. And Sean... I have there are dangers in this world that you preface me on and I need to know more. You were just like, hey, I got this thing. Do you want to talk about it? And I said, well, yes, because now I have one more thing to worry about, you know, because that's what I need in the world. Richard, is one more thing to worry about. But, Sean, you're going to help me get over this. Richard, we always talk about, you know, like you think of horror movies and you're like, well, this isn't real. You know, there's the, you know, Michael Myers stalking that little town in Illinois or, you know, that great white shark stalking the waters of Illinois, (laughs) Illinois. Where was that? That was a man. No, it wasn't. What was the, what was the state? There was not New Hampshire. Amity Island. Where was it at though? What was the state? Where was Amity Island? It was Massachusetts, wasn't it? I thought so. Wasn't it? Yeah, because it seems like someplace you wouldn't think of like being a beach community. Was it Massachusetts or was it like Maryland? Maybe Maryland. Let's look that up. And then you and so so what you're so basically what I'm learning is stay away from islands with terrible mares that set that just want to open for the Fourth of July. Massachusetts. I you said what I I said Massachusetts right? You said okay. Massachusetts. I said Maryland. Uh, I mean There's, they're basically the same thing. Yeah, they're close. Yeah. Ish. What, and that's what's funny is because that's a state that's kind of like higher up. So you don't really think of it as a beach town. Kind of like New yeah. Hampshire. Or not New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, uh, 
My brain does not work today. Maine. Uh, no, I was thinking Red Bank, New Jersey. R- New Jersey. Like, you don't think of New Jersey as like a... a North Dakota. Beach town or North Dakota. Oh. <laughs> Although, I wouldn't mind living in like Montana, North Dakota, except during winter. Winter would be rough. Your summers are short, but lots of open country. Yeah, it's just covered in snow and bears. Yeah, but there's other animals you can hunt and stalk and kill and eat. Yeah. And then the ever... bear hunt and stalks and kills and eats no. you. That's what, you just got to be uh, more fierce than the bear. So you're telling me you can be more fierce than a bear? I mean, if I survive a couple winters in Montana, probably. And you know what? If not, I've become one with nature. Instead of burying me in a tree that grows up into a beautiful apple tree, I become bear poop and I become berries. Berries? Mm. Berries? But, a ch- but Richard, so like we said... There are so many tales of these things that stalk towns, put mm-hmm. people on lockdowns where they're scared to leave their homes. Mm-hmm. This, Richard, isn't, yeah. isn't something invisible. Yeah, one more invisible. thing. Thanks. You're welcome. So now you're like, oh, my God, I'm ready to come out, Richard, and you walk out. Let's put, let's put you in the most dangerous country in the world. Where do you think that is? The most Australia, dangerous. Australia. Hands Australia. down. And Antarctica. 1,000%. It yeah. is a terrible island filled with God's monsters. Yeah, you know, and it's always funny. I always think, and this is where this takes place. This is in Australia. We're going to put ourselves I knew it. right I in Australia. I fucking knew it. It's funny about Australia because, like, there's lots of animals that live in, like, so, like, there's, you know, like, deer you can find in North America. You can find them in, you know, Europe. Like, you can find them all over. All the things that want to kill you only live in Australia. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. either when God created this beautiful planet of ours, he's like, I'm cutting this off right away. This is not part of Pangea. Yeah, we're going to surround this by with water because that's the only thing that's going to keep this horrible fucking freak show of death that I've m- masterminded. So, I, Do you have any theories on that? Like, why is it only Australia? Besides if it is like some, you know, spaghetti monster in the sky that decided to do that. Why do you think that's the case? I think it's because I think a hundred percent has to do with the fact that it's an island. Uh, I I don't remember if we did a show on it, but, but there yeah, is an it's, I- it's an island. But at one point, everything was connected, right? That's what I was taught on a YouTube video about Pangea. I mean, you were also taught about Christopher Columbus. He sailed he the ocean like blue. An awesome guy. Yeah, there's a lot of bad people back then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will say when it comes to Pangea. I mean, I think I think that's real. My wife actually showed me a, a, a an app thing. Well, not really an app, but it's like a website that you can put in your map coordinates on the site, and it'll show you where y- where your map coordinates were a hundred million years ago when Pan- when there was Pangea. So, but, oh, I got you. Because basically, yeah. So it would shrink it up. Yeah, I mean, you're yeah. still on that specific piece of land. Per yeah. se, it was just moved. But, but like where it sat. So, do you think Australia was not part of Pangaea? Um, because I mean, if maybe, it, maybe not. I because don't know. if it was, I feel like there, we'd have like you know koala bears. But I mean, okay, like with okay with Pangaea, you're talking about you know millions, if not billions, of years ago. But yeah, but even stuff in like North America, that I guess there's the land bridges. So maybe that could be some of the reason for it. Like yeah, a lot Australia, of that stuff Australia had no land bridges. Yeah, so maybe it got cut off pretty quick. But still, I feel like you would have some of those animals around. I guess the reason, okay, so so there's an, I don't, like I said, I can't remember if we did a show on it, but there is an island off the coast of um, South America somewhere. I want to say Argentina or Chile. But um, mm, you actually need, you actually like have to get a certification from the country's medical board. Of of Arge- like I said, I think it's Argentina. You got to get like a rubber stamp from this medical board in order to go to this island. <gasps> is this Sea Land? No, it is not Sea Land because th- it's a very small island, but it is filled with some of the deadliest plants, snakes, and spiders anywhere in the world. I've heard of the the place with the snakes, but and maybe I just I think it might be the snakes. But it's like it's like a very small island. But like, that's where, that's where the death is. Well, and the one I know about that I read that like legitimately, like there's like per square foot 
I think it said there's like one or two snakes. Like it is infested with snakes that yeah, are like super yeah. deadly. Yeah, and they're all yeah, they all like are like umpteenly poisonous. Yeah. Like basically anything that goes to that island dies. It's an island of death. That's why you have to get cleared from this because me- they gotta be like, you know, if you go there, like everything's gonna kill you and we will never see you again. Tunk, tunk, sold. It's, it's kind of like those islands where they have like the indigenous people that haven't seen like anything in technology or anything. And people yeah. go there and they're like, hey, you should come to Susette. Thunk. And they yeah. teach you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's cannibal holocaust all over. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's still crazy to think that like, there's places where people are still, you know, primitive, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah. Give them like some YouTube, some Pornhub. They'll be like, oh my God, Pornhub. Although, you know what? That you show them that, like, yeah, that's just Tuesday here. You're like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> Teach me of your ways. Yeah. Like, oh crap, he was looking at gay porn. Oh well, in for a nickel, in for a dime. <laughs> this is, yeah. You're like, this is my stepmom. And you're like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Even here. The, no, what you do is like he, he pulls that up. He's like, "Oh, well, no, we don't, we don't do our step parents. That's weird." Yeah, oh, and you're okay, like, good. "Oh, thank God!" But my mom, oh, oh damn shit! It. No, Richard. So we're gonna go to Australia, the land of death. Yeah, you know, there's it like is, it is a land of death. It's an it's it's an island and it's full of monsters. Yeah. Everything there wants to kill you. There's fucking bears with claws. Drop bears. Okay. Yeah, bears with claws, and then. They have plants that like make you want to go crazy and punch yourself and hit your, you know, and, and shoot yourself. Yeah. Those They've are the ones snakes. that like burn, right? That's the yeah. plant you're talking about. Yeah. They've got snakes. Yeah. They've crocodiles. got alligators. They have crocodiles. They got crocodiles. They have no alligators. Yeah. No alligators. They got crocodiles, though. Mm hmm. They got crocodiles. Spiders. They've got. Oh, the fucking spiders. Yeah, and you're like, you know what? I want to go a dip in this water over here. Guess what? Great white sharks. Yeah, yeah. They have rabbits. They have rabbits that punch you in the face. Yeah, so Richard, the rabbits that punch you in the face, these are like the boxing champions of the world, right? You see this on all the old cartoons. They put on the old glovey gloves, and they box yeah. like, uh, Bugs Bunny. Yeah. Richard, Time for a bit of the old fist to cop, say. Hmm. There is a town in Brisbane, Australia... And Brisbane. I found, found this through Mashable and the Daily Mail. Co. Uk. Okay, so I got two articles. And Brisbane. Here. So that's how a, they say it. They Brisbane, say Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah. So in Brisbane, there's a surprisingly buff kangaroo that's been hanging out in the neighborhood around Brisbane. Oh fuck! He's out intimidating locals on the golf course, flexing and generally impressing everyone with his massive physique. Fuck that. Richard, this kangaroo nicknamed Big Buck is walking over to the pool. I bet he's drunk. Trying to find, he's like, hey, what's up? What's up? Where's your husband? Oh, yeah. he's not here, is he? Guess who's here? Big Buck. I'm a Buck. kangaroo, and I'm here to fuck somebody's <laughs> wife. My name's Buck, and I like to party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a kangaroo, and I'm here to fuck your wife. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Smoking's bad. Yeah, no Smack joke. Smack cigarettes out of people's hands. Walks up, knocks on your door. What are you going to do? Are you going to challenge him to a duel? Wife's yeah. going to be like, Richard, no, it's just an animal. Whack, whack, whack. Oh, he's so strong. Yeah, right? You ever seen, like, 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 you whenever, like, when I initially thought of a kangaroo, I imagined, like you did, like what you saw in the Warner Brothers cartoons, which was like, um, you know, it looks like, you know, almost, it almost kind of like a bat, like had like a, like a basset hound kind of face, you know? Yeah. And they're always kind of small, like maybe three to four feet. Yeah. They always look like, they always look kind of smallish and like, they're kind of like, you know, they hop and stuff like that, but it kind of looks in the Warner brothers cartoons. It always came across to me like a giant bunny. Yeah. You know? no, I get that. Like a, a little bit more like defined, but yeah, just a big bunny. Yeah, like a big bunny, and they got their tail that they kind of, you know, like the, they'll sit on. You're like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, and Sean, then a little baby kangaroo. Life, it's not fucking cute. No, not the males. the The females are still kind of cute because like a little baby hangs out their pouch. You're like, oh, that's cute. A little no, Joey. I mean, the, the guys are hopping around. They've got like a cap. The they're wearing like a like a cowboy's 
baseball cap turned mm-hmm. sideways. Wife beater t-shirt. Yeah, or- they were in gold chains. All swolled up. It's like high school gym, Richard, mm-hmm. is what they remind me of. Like, mm-hmm. you're in the locker room. Rue bounces up to you. He's like, hey, my name's Buck. Yeah. And I like to. I'm a kangaroo. Fuck this podcast, a motherfucker. I'm going to fuck your wife. Yeah. It's like, but I'm only in high school. Why well, won't I fuck your mom? <laughs> oh, damn it. Do I have to call you dad, Buck? Yeah. <laughs> Uncle how old Buck. are you? 85. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how long kangaroos live for. Fucking. I don't care what Pornhub says. I don't think this is right. So it's quoted by Linda Hellyer, who spotted Big Buck and says he's very intimidating. He's yeah. a big boy. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, because they, well, like, they, look, they look like jacked. No, they swell up. Like if you like yeah. come up on one, they'll like buff up. And this is what the, this is what Buck's doing. Buck is walking around this town of Brisbane, and he is like swollen up on people. There's a picture, Richard, in this other article. It looks like the uh, um, M Night Shyamalan movie Signs. You uh-huh. know, it's that shot from a party like down a driveway, and you see that weird looking alien walk down it and do like the Sasquatch look, and then keep walking. It's just like that, but this kangaroo is not continuing to walk, Richard. He stops it there and co- full frontal presents what's going on with Big Buck. It's like, you know why they call me Big Buck? You know why they call him Big Buck, Richard? What? 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 Because God he's boy. a big boy. Oh, shit. <laughs> so Linda was talking about this. She said, we turned the corner and old mate jumped out. I love that they say mate in Australia. <laughs> Me and my mate. <clears throat> he's very big, and I don't want to take him on. He's got massive, hey, massive muscles, room, mate. big pecs hey, hey. and everything. Linda's kind of like very vividly describing this. Like if I'm Linda's husband. Yeah. Linda's, you know, I feel like Linda's got some kangaroo vapors. Is that mm-hmm. what you're trying to say? I'm going to like flip through her like, uh, you know, search history. Yeah. Check her DMs. Rue on Rue. <laughs> That's a weird, that's a weird search. What is that for? Oh, God, my eyes. <laughs> yeah, because she's very like, like, I would say like if, if I saw this kangaroo, I'd be like, oh, man, he's got massive muscles and probably stop there. But she's like, he's got massive, massive muscles, big sex and dude. everything. They look fucking jacked. Yeah, this, this article is very short on this part. We'll bounce to the other one. But they talk about, like, in general, kangaroos are timid creatures, but they can fight by leaning back on their tails and boxing and kicking. They don't just box. They kick. Yeah. Yeah, they, like, I that I remember from the Bugs Bunny cartoons. They, they like, they lean back on their tails, and then they kick with their bottom feet. Because, like, because they're, because their arms, like, they're up, they're, like, arms, they look like almost like people arms. Yeah. I mean, when they stand up like straight legged, I mean, besides like the rabbit feet, I mean, they just look like a human with big feet. Yeah. Big covered booty. in fur and fur. Yeah. Actually, you know what they kind of, this one kind of looks like, it almost looks like a deer, but like standing up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, I, I mean, can totally see that. Like you think about that, like a deer, if it came walking up to you on its hind legs would freak the shit out of you. Have you seen, there's a would. video of this town where this bear was like, it basically had something wrong with its front paws, and all it would do is walk around on its back feet because its front oh, paws shit. were like screwed up. And it legit looks like a dude in a bear costume. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, like could you imagine 3 a.m. walking out drunk and you see that? It's like, oh, I'm going to go hug that guy in the bear. Oh, God, it's eating my face. Come here. I love you so much. Bear hug, oh, this, you are just, 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 take that mask ah! off. And then chomp. That's what that's when it, that's that's how it bites your head off, Sean. It or just goes chomp. He starts going, boop, 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 it's like, no, Greg, we did not do this. I mean, some asshole human did, but not us. B.T. Barnum, that's who did this. And how do you know? Maybe he's just hanging out and he found a unicycle and he liked it. You never know. Who taught one how to fly a plane? Yeah, he just wants to fly. So, Fucking Walt Disney. <laughs> if I find his frozen head, I'm going to kick it and put it on a unicycle. The, the, the... The bullshit that he put animals through. He taught he he fucking forced a bear 
to fly a plane. Mm. He forced he forced an elephant to fly with his fucking ears. Yeah. Didn't even give him a plane. A talking elephant at that. You yeah. Know, that elephant could have solved a lot of the world's problems. But no, he's like, hey, you got big ears. Fly, Dumbo. Oh, that's a great name. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'll call you Dumbo. Because of your big, dumb ears. Yeah. Don't talk your to anybody. Your name's actually Bo. <laughs> but if that's I had his dumb- name. The elephant's name was actually Bo, but then Walt Disney showed up and he was like, you're dumb, Bo. Well, Wait. fly with your big fucking freak ears, you bastard. Is Bo a Jewish name? And then he name? punched it. Wasn't he anti-Semitic? Or is that just a rumor? Um, It's a rumor, but it's a fairly well-founded rumor. I gotcha. Um, that was a weird time, because he would have been... That was in the 40s and stuff, too, right? Like, so that would have been during World War II. Taught a bear how to fly a plane. What else do you do? Taught Dumbo how to fly with his ears. Made my force Dumbo to f- for money and go west. Yeah, forced them all to wear people clothes. Mm. Yeah. Nobody, no animal likes wearing people clothes. We do have a dog that kind of didn't likes even it. give Donald Duck a Winnie the Pooh pants. That's true. That's kind of weird when you think about it, right? Like Piglet's got pants. Does Piglet have pants? No, I don't think Piglet has pants. Did anybody in Winnie the Pooh have pants? Christopher Robin, luckily. Well, you know, that becomes a whole different, like, weird, cons- not conspiracy, but controversy. Uh, sometimes when Rabbit was working in the garden, I think they gave him suspenders. Well, yeah, I mean, that's only practical. Mickey Mouse had pants. Yeah, but mice are weird. But ducks have corkscrew penises, so you would think that you'd want him to have some pants on. You would think. You would think you'd want all the animals, if you were going to put them in people clothes, like... Pants is an essential part of people clothes. Yeah. Whenever you're walking around with a shirt and no pants, do you call it Donald Ducking? Uh, I've heard that. I f- I can't do it. Like I can't just put a shirt on and no pants. Like I just feel weird. Like yeah. it's, especially if the shirt's like kind of long and it goes like mm-hmm. past like and so it's like I'm wearing a nightgown. I can't. How do you do think it. Donald Duck feels? Well, I mean that's kind of a him problem. I mean, yeah, Walt Disney's like this is how you dress, but you know. He's dead now, so. Oh, my God. Like, what if the hat, what if Donald Duck, like, went into Walt Disney's office and he's like, this is how you dress. <laughs> and he, like, stands up from his desk and he's wearing, like, a suit jacket and a shirt and no pants. And he's going to leave and Disney's like, no, you put the Face t-shirt me. on. Drop those drawers. Witness. Do you want to work in this town again, hot chick, hot cheeks? You want to be a Disney star, don't you? Don't you duck with me, you mother ducker. Yeah. Yeah. Walt Disney was a slave driver. Mm. I wonder he did. I guess he, he forced pe- okay. forced his animals to wear people clothes, but not pants, because he's a sicky. Did he and draw then, much, or did he just hire people to draw? No, he just hired people. Yeah, that's something I know. I've seen like people. He just made those videos about like the world of tomorrow and shit like that, right? Like that's all I ever saw. Whenever I actually saw Walt Disney, like on tv or in a movie or something like that he was always like he was always doing do you remember jurassic do you remember the first jurassic park where they had that they did that informational video yeah like the exposition scene you know where like um david attenborough's like oh mr dna oh yeah yeah. oh yeah yeah but that was all that was every time i saw disney walt disney he was doing that shit he was doing the intros to the movie of the week kind of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be sitting in some fucking library. I'm guessing that's where he, you know, like based, like for lack of a better word, sexually, uh, you know, assaulted Donald Duck. Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, and Donald Duck. Do you think he had them standing off camera so he could show his power? They're standing there, like covering up. That's why the camera was always like waist up. Yeah, because he wasn't wearing pants. Oh, maybe he's like he's this just- is how you do it, Duck. Maybe he's just Danny Pants. It's like it's freeing. You guys are so <laughs> suburban. Just let it Fucking hang out. Pants. But then, like he did, he had a thing with boobs. It's He's a like, form of control. He doesn't like dreamed nipples. up by the Jews. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing. I say the Jews. I meant the Jews. Damn it! <laughs> Cut this out of your fire. <laughs> So, Richard, Big Buck uh, is a two-meter tall animal. It's said to weigh up to 95 kilograms. If Walt Disney was around, he'd make Big Buck wear a shirt and no pants. So There were oh, kangaroos shit. in Winnie the Pooh. 
I think he put them in clothes. Well, what was uh, Winnie the Pooh? Uh, there was the the mom and the Roo. It was, was Kanga the and then Roo. Oh, but yeah. I think they wore shirts and no pants. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, I mean, how is he going to get out of the power? Roo is a child. That's true. Well, I mean, I mean, what was Winnie, what do you think Winnie the Pooh is like? When you put him in an age, like I feel like he's like maybe 22. I feel like he's older than Roo. Yeah. And he puts Rue in a story with a bunch of fucking Donald Duckin motherfuckers. <laughs> so 95 kilograms, Richard, is 209 pounds. Fuck. So this big buck is jacked. Yeah, and this isn't like, you know, our 200 plus pounds where it's like flab. This is a jacked 210. Like... I'm like I said, I'm seeing him in this picture, and two meters tall is like right at six foot. So he's like 5'10, 5'11, freaking 200 pounds stacked at the end of your drive, looking down, like, what? You want some of this, bro? You want to step into this shower? You know yeah. what's going to happen in this shower? You know what's going to happen, Sean? We're going to whip it? you with a towel. We're going to whip you the whole time. You going to yeah. cry, Sean? You going to cry? <laughs> After I'm done, I'm going to. Fuck you, wife. <laughs> Why is that where you always want to go? Uh, she so, looks pretty. So he's been spotted in playgrounds, walking tracks, and even the local golf club in North Lakes, Brisbane. So the last chick we talked about, Linda Hellyer, uh, she's on this article as well. So he basically is like walking around, like looking for a fight. Like he's walking around intent on pissing somebody off. Well, I, I mean, he's probably walking around trying to find him a lady because I'm looking at this article and they have a video with Linda Hellier and uh-huh. she's kind of got like a, mm, Mr. Buck's got it going on. So you think he's looking for Linda? I think so. I think there's a little love quarrel. Looking for Linda in down all, in Brisbane. Looking for Linda in all the wrong places. She's at the store in Brisbane, Australia. There's her husband. I hate his face. Her dog's Big all Buck gonna punch him in the dick. <laughs> oh God, her dogs are barking again. Gonna kick their fucking heads off. Ooh. See, you could have said "n" and it would have rhymed. Oh damn it! See, all right, let's start from the top. This is why you were never a country <laughs> star. <laughs> But again, she is quoted with the same quote here where she says he's got massive, massive muscles, a big pecs and everything. And he stood up because he was obviously a bit frightened of the dogs. Which the Richard, kangaroo was, was afraid of the dogs? That's what blows my mind. So like little dogs, for one, like if they go barking at something, it usually freaks out, right? Yeah. So yeah. our dog snuck out of the house and went chasing after – it wasn't a big dog. It was probably like 40, 50 pounds, but it was like so- – Ten Your t- dog was chasing another dog? Yeah, like our dog's okay. like eight pounds. And she got okay. out and saw it, was like, bow, 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 went running after it. Yeah. And this dog's like 40 pounds. And it's like, dude, like if that dog wants to chomp your head, it totally can. <laughs> yeah. But it was scared, 100%. Which I never understand. Like, why is no, that? No, I don't get that either. Because she's done that to a bigger dog, too, like a big, mean dog. I went out to the in laws' house with her, and usually I let her out so she can walk inside. And they have this big husky dog. He's probably about like a buck ten. And that dog comes running across the yard. It was their neighbor's dog barking at me, going, war, 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 war. Yeah. And she took off after it. And I was like, oh God, I just killed my dog. Right. And when that dog got close enough to her, it was like, oh fuck, what is that little gremlin? And <laughs> took off hightailing. <laughs> So even though it's not uncommon to get visits from kangaroos in the area, this one stands out not only with its huge size, both its distinct tear and its left ear. Richard, this fucker knows how to brawl. This is oh, like shit. So it's, it's got like a it's got like a scar. So that's how that's how everybody knows who it is. It's like it's like uh, I don't know. Whenever you like you hear like stories about like. Oh, it's the fucking the white whale or the fucking alligator that ate my hand or shit like yeah, that, you know? Like, oh, it's got a scar over its eye. Yeah, it's always a scar. But yeah, something yeah. bit the shit out of this thing's ear, and it is pissed. Maybe that's what I want to know. For. What bit this thing in its ear? Well, maybe it was like like maybe when it was a little like uh, Joey, this kid in Brisbane went out and saw this kangaroo, and they became friends, and they're like. Buck Roo, Bucky the Roo, 
<laughs> gonna bite your fucking ear. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had like a sitcom about it, or yeah, and this yeah. little this little kid, you know, as kids are, was a little rough with his toys, and so when he's playing with this Rue, he bit, bit his ear off. Oh shit! And so now Rue's grown up, and he's been pumping iron. Now he's back. He's yeah, back for revenge. Uh, you know what? You know what bit him? You know what bit him? Guaranteed, it's a fucking emu. Could have been. Well, I like it better that it's a human. That's why he's stuck in this town. Because it's kind of like the... Like, I think emu makes more logical sense because that's a big old fuck-off bird. Yeah, but I mean, ideally, like, like I could see a little, you know, spoiled kid got this rue as a, you know, gift because his parents and he's, were And he's loving. like, fuck this thing! Arr. I saw the I saw this Mike Tyson, and I talk like this too sometimes. I'm going to bite yeah. you, here, Black. Arr. And then it's then twenty years later, it's all jacked up and swole and showing up drunk, being like Joey, where you at, Joey? Joey, come out to play. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's the thing. He comes into this town like this is a horror movie. He comes into Brisbane and he's walking around. Is house it a to horror house. movie or is it an underdog story? Uh, I mean, depends on who produces it. If it's Disney, it's an underdog story. Yeah. Because all right, if it's a Disney movie. Him and Joey, you know, meet up, and then they, you know, Brisbane's park is getting closed down because it's, you know, it doesn't have enough funding. So right. him and uh, Joey go to put on a charity boxing match. Yeah, and yeah. Joey kicks the shit out of him. He's like, but then it turns out that the kangaroo has a drinking problem. Yeah, and then and then somebody gets the kangaroo to drink. Ben and Affleck screws up shows up one of the boxing matches. Yeah. But then he has he's and then he has to serve the kangaroo has to serve community service. Yeah. But then he finds this ragtag group of uh kids. He meets Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck's like a former Australian boxer with no Australian accent. Yeah. And, and then Ben Affleck's him. like, All right, number one, no pants. <laughs> Like, uh, wait, what? Sir, we're all teenagers and some of us are not teenagers. No oh. pants. <laughs> Well, if it's good enough for Disney, it's good enough for us. Did Walt write this script? Yes, he did. Just, I mean, he's 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 bankrolling, so just shut up and go with yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of weird he had the foresight to write this, and I didn't, you know, it's on a typewriter, so. No, this is actually Ben Affleck's, like, hidden script he wrote, like, right after. Uh, it's not Ben Affleck, though. You know who it is? It's Mel Gibson. That's who it is. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. he's also from Australia. Oh yeah, that's right. I always forget yeah. that. Yeah, Andy's got the uh, yeah the same the same dis the Disney mentality. Yeah, I don't know if that's as much as alleged. Though. He's like talking to the kangaroo. He's like, "Look, I like the bottle as much as anybody. Believe you me, I'm just saying. I sometimes say you have. I got a little bit of the drinking problem. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's inside feelings and there's outside feelings, and the inside feelings." Need to stay inside feelings. Otherwise, they don't give you an Oscar. Yeah, it takes you a while. Or in your case, win a boxing match or wherever the fuck you're doing. What are you doing again? Who are you? Did I tell you I made a movie about Jesus? (laughs) But yeah, so he loses the first fight. He goes through community service. And then he comes up because, you know, Joey's like, uh, you know, just a dick. Like, he's running. Town. He's like, I'm going to run. for Oh, shit. That's what happens. Joey's like, I'm running for mayor of Brisbane. And oh, there's shit. nobody to challenge me. And here comes Big Buck. He's like, I'm going to stand up to you. He's like, you're a drunken fucking I said group. that I'll run too. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're not doing a vote. We're going to do another boxing match. Yeah. Third scene. Right and then there. Mel Gibson's kind of like in the oh my god see and then Mel Gibson is like the Mickey character yeah because it's you know number one's Disney movie and number two you got Mickey like in Rocky so it like it like pieces are coming together now yeah and like right before the twelfth round Mel Gibson has a heart attack <laughs> and dies and they cart him away and that's where <laughs> Big Buck finds it in him to give him the uppercut yeah. Yeah. And then they find out the whole time that Joey was running an underground kangaroo fighting. No, what would it be? If it's Disney, what would it be? Um, it'd be something stupid, like something that's like, like I tried to watch Rookie of the Year. Yeah. And like the whole idea behind that's like the Cubs are going out of business 
and they're going to lose their ownership because the owner's stupid now because he's old. And okay. his son, like, obviously, you know, wants it now, but he can't. And so a kid falls and breaks his arm and can throw 100 miles an hour. That movie made uh, no so, sense, but I liked it. So you're asking what's the what's the what's Joey's ultimate game? Yeah, what's his ulterior motive? Um he wants to be mayor because once he becomes mayor, he's going to um oh, he's going to tear sell? down he's going to tear down the park that that they were that he originally met the kangaroo in and turn he's it into tear a shopping down the park mall. and build a a shopping mall. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. And everybody's like, well, that doesn't seem financially responsible because shopping malls are going under. Yeah. Shopping malls are like, he's like, shut up, kid. You're not even wearing pants. That's his other, that's his other crazy ordinance. No, that was Mel Gibson's thing. Oh, that's right. Mel Gibson's the no pants yeah. guy. Cause he's like Walt Disney. Well, he would say like, you have to wear long sleeve shirts. Like, but this is Australia. It's hot. Yeah. Too bad. I'm the mayor. Well, I will be. Ha 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 ha. Maniacal yeah. laugh. Oh, and you know what? Oh, wait, no. I'm trying to think because always in those two, like the bad guys trying to date like the good guy's mom. Maybe that's what's okay. See, now him. it's getting weird because now let's, he's trying to date big because now at the mom. end of this movie, you're saying that, that a girl's going to end up fucking a kangaroo, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not it's there. Disney. That's okay. What Disney movie do you have? Our Beauty and the Beast, but that's totally different. Mm, is it? Um, okay, Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid, but that was, but like, wasn't a mammal, that was a fish. So, mm. uh, okay, Princess and the Frog. Yeah, Aladdin. Who wanted to fuck the, nobody wanted to fuck the monkey. I don't know, that genie looked like he was getting some weird action. With what? The carpet? Mm, yeah, there you go. That's even <laughs> weirder. <laughs> Uh, so North Lakes local Alan James told Channel 7 News that he has seen the giant animal wandering around the area several times. It's a big one. It's a big roo. And I'm used to animals from out in the West, and it is a big roo. So, like, that's the thing. Like, I always feel like where we live in the Midwest, there's not a lot for us to be scared of. Uh huh. Like, we have a couple snakes that are kind of rare that are poisonous. True. Um, bobcats, but those are, those are super rare. Mountain lions. Mm, iffy like like they see these kangaroos that like if you startled it it would beat the shit out of you like no concern whatsoever yeah 100 percent. and like it's not it's it's a it's a guarantee that that would happen like it's not like uh oh gee i wonder what it'll do like with a cat like you could possibly like scare it off yeah you stick or, your you thumb know, in its butt yeah i thought that was dogs cats works too do you know that well i mean Have my tried cats that? never killed me I mean, I guess really at the end of the day, I feel like that should work. I feel like that's just kind of like a go to with anything. It's a good defense. I mean, that's, I mean, if ever I get in a fight. So, like back in high school, Richard, uh, there's this guy named Big Buck who always beat me up in the gym. <laughs> and uh huh. I did it once. Yeah. Yeah. And then nobody wanted to touch you after that. Yep. But he asked Men me. Men and women. Was weird. Yeah. It was a different time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the dates were lining up after that. But I mean, this is what's weird though, too, is you think just like, I, I wonder if it's kind of, uh, you know, like whenever you hear about people who go like, you know, like the moose story I've told where, where somebody I knew went up to a moose and a, it's, it's a, a mom moose and the baby moose. Yeah. Yeah. It's somebody who just doesn't understand. It's so like, if you and I moved to California, like I could see us walking trails and not being like, Oh wait, you mean there's cougars here that aren't divorced moms of two in their forties. <laughs> like that's what we came out here for. But somebody walking the golf course and accidentally running into Rue on the 19th hole. Fuck that. I have heard, uh, like, so this is a good example of that too. In Florida, if you hit a ball into the woods, uh, -huh. uh, they tell you to leave it there. Like, don't even go after it. No. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Cause it's probably fucking alligator or some kind of nonsense yeah, in there. That's nature's ball at that point. Yeah. Which scares the shit out of me to think about like, oh yeah, like that close to where you're playing golf, there's something that will bite you. I heard off. that right now it's out it's mating season for alligators. Oh man. I so love like they're fucking like they're do they're, they're fucking like fucking. acting crazy in Florida. Like there was a video I saw of one just like chilling out in the middle of a highway. I saw there's a huge one that um 
on the, I think it might have been the same. Was it the one that the police were following down the fence line? I think line? so, yeah. Fucking big old alligator. Yeah. Alligators are super cool to look at and watch, but, I mean, like, you think about being scared I mean, it's basically sharks. the closest thing we have to dinosaurs. Yeah. At this point. Well, they supposedly they've been around since dinosaurs, haven't they? I think so, yeah. Like, so have great whites. That's always what they tell you. Yeah, yeah. Which, why don't we talk to them? They could tell us about it, but. Like, that's true. It'd be like, and then this weird old guy showed up and wanted me to wear a shirt with no pants. Yeah. I'm a fucking fish. So I bit off the pirate's hand. I said, fuck you. And then I tried to put this fucking seashell bra on me. And I was like, I'll have none of this, sir. And I bit off his whole body, but the head got away. Don't ever know what happened to that head. Every time I swim around him, though, he gets scared because I ate a clock. <laughs> So concerns for the welfare of kangaroos in the area was raised earlier this year when reports were made of kangaroos getting trapped behind the fences of construction sites in the fast-growing suburb, calling for dedicated wildlife havens in and around North Lakes. That's kind of the end of that article. But yeah, basically. So, so do they say like, oh, we, you know, hit it with a tranquilizer dart and drove it, you know, 89 miles into the desert. No, this thing's just been elusive from what it sounds like. So there's no like state of emergency about it. There's no, there's just this big thing they've been seeing around town, which. Yeah. Cause they're, you know, cause they're like, you know what? Like in a, in a, on an Island where I can get, you know, like poisoned by a spider or a plant or a snake or go swimming and get eaten by a shark. Like in the, in, in, in this, you know, hellish landscape that I live in, that's called Brisbane, Australia, like, Getting punched by a rabbit is like, you know, fairly like low priority for me. Yeah. That happens like every Tuesday. Right. You just get punched in the face by a rabbit. Would you live in Australia? Fuck no. Okay. That's kind of where I'm sitting. Like, I don't even know if I want to visit. Like, Tiff and I have talked about it. I mean, like, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, the beaches and shit, like, it looks fucking gorgeous. But you know what? So does Hawaii, and there's big-ass fucking sharks there, too. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so there's a book, Richard, called Unbroken, Unbreakable. I think it's Unbroken. It's about uh, Louis Zamperini. It's about Bruce Willis, right? It's about Bruce Willis. And he punches a shark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrestles it. But he can't get in the water because if he does, then he drowns, right? Yeah, because his past self, like, didn't learn how to swim. So Uh whenever he gets uh in the water, like, he could accidentally go back in time. Yeah. And then Samuel L. Jackson shows up, and he's like, I got a kangaroo for you. And then him, and then Bruce Willis and the kangaroo fight. You just, I love that idea. So, (laughs) side note. The worst time travel movie I've ever seen is one with Denzel Washington. I can't Um, remember what it's called, but it's fucking weird and not very good. I don't know. I've seen some fucking shit movies. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. I can't think of any off the top of my head that involve time travel though. But like, so with Hawaii too, I remember, uh, there's a podcast I was listening to. Oh, I was talking about unbreakable unbreakable. You know, they're flying over the Pacific all the time and they would shoot at sharks. And apparently sharks learn that when these planes crash, it's like, oh, my God, free food. Oh, yeah. yeah. And in this story, when it cra- when their plane crash landed, they were in a like a basically a raft that was okay. losing air for one. Oh, shit. So the three of them, they'd have to take turns keeping it pumped up. Yeah. They said sharks would just swim around them the whole time, like smacking up against it, like even almost jumping into the raft trying to get them. Oh, uh, fuck that. Yeah. That's my nightmare. But in Hawaii, I heard a story about this guy who there was a, a shark that swam into this little lagoon that they were like learning to paddle boat in. And the guy's instructor told him, like, oh my God, get your feet up, get your feet up. So, like, on a big surfboard, essentially. Uh huh. And with the waves, he started drifting over into this, it was a little bit deeper and darker. Okay. And, the, and they didn't know where the shark went. And so the uh, instructor's like, holy shit, get, get over here, get over here. Because apparently, if he gets over too far, uh-huh. The shark might be like, huh, and do the little, you know, torpedo up. Oh, Sharks shit. fucking scare the shit out of me is what I'm getting at, Richard. Yeah, that's 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 kind of the gist that I'm getting. What? But you know what they're not? They're not land rabbits that punch you in the face. That's true, but at least I'd see a land rabbit coming, hopefully. I'm, More so than a shark. More so than a shark, yes. But, Richard, we know how to defend ourselves against a shark, right? You punch it in the nose, 
poke it in the eye. Stick a finger in its butt. Exactly. I knew it. Longer reach, but if you get it there, take your See, palm. I'm learning. <laughs> so I found this other article to tie into this. It's from 10daily.com, and it basically kind of goes through what to do when kangaroos attack your family. Okay, I actually want to know this because, like I said, this you know wasn't a fear that I had, but now I do, so now you have to help me alleviate my fear. All right, so go so ahead. Richard, item number one, you need to stay ready. To always be prepared. Yes. Yeah, so while they may okay. seem cute, kangaroos are dangerous animals prone to scratch potential threats and use their massive hind legs to kick. And oh, in fuck. some cases, Richard, I didn't know this, gut their opponent. Velociraptor style. Oh shit! And you know what? When you get your gut cut and like your gut spill out, I think it takes you a little bit to die. Like, yeah, like well, because there's no, you know, like when it comes to that, you don't have any like really, you don't have any real like nerve endings there. So like you don't even, you don't. I mean, like you feel pain obviously because your skin gets ripped open, but like you could sit there and like juggle your fucking intestines and shit Ooh. and. And so he's sitting there, big buck is flexing over top of you as you're like handling all your intestines. He's like, hey, you know what yeah, I'm gonna do now? Yeah, and then he grabs him and fucking like tries to make a lasso. Yeah, he's like, you know what I'm gonna go do now? I'm gonna go fuck your wife. Yeah. I'm gonna wear your intestines as a fucking skirt. Not like Disney. <laughs> Here's my pants, Walt, you son of a bitch. So according to uh, basically the information they have, there's been 18 confirmed kills by kangaroos between 2000 and 2010. So just over one a year. So one 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 person dies every year to kangaroos. Mm-hmm. Just over one. One a year. person in Australia or one person worldwide? Ooh, uh, you know that's a good question. I th- I would think just well, I would think it's one and the same. I, I guess because you know like. Aside from Australia, like where the fuck are their kangaroos? Yeah, besides Well, zoos. no, we did that we did that one story about there was one in Austria, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's right. Was it Austria or was that no, yeah, it was Austria. Because I can't Because we were because there was Austria and Australia. Yeah, yeah. Uh don't try to box it. What's the matter with you? Is what this says. Well, yeah. Cause Which, I feel like they're, you know. I feel like they're better suited for it than me. Like, that's not my first instinct. No, yeah. Well, but there is a good It's like trying to get in a swimming contest with a shark. Yeah, that's a good point. There is a good gif here. I remember seeing this. It's this uh, kangaroo that has this guy's dog, like, in a headlock. Uh Uh-huh. And the guy comes running out and squares up with it and throws a punch and hits it in the face. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. and, And the kangaroo, like, throws his arms in the air like a, you know current NBA basketball player who gets I mean he doesn't really scrapped. punch it it's more like a he does like this open handed slap uh, let me watch it's doing the slow mo right now it, uh, yeah, look, it's, it's it, not a, to me it looks more like a like a limp wristed open hand slap yeah it's not a jab it's it's a roundhouse but yeah like has his dog in a headlock or whatever which I mean I would do the same thing yeah I don't know if I'd walk up and like you know be like ah yeah I'd probably grab a stop shovel stop it and smack it you got to have something until it grabs I'd be walking. Yeah, I'd, wa- I'd, wa- I'd be walking up there with like a stick or something and be like, get the fuck away from my dog. Whap. What do you do when it takes the stick from you and chases you with it? Well, then the dog gets to get away. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess that's good. That's the good news. Yeah. Your dying breath is seeing your dog running away. You're like, you yeah. son of a bitch. You were supposed to help me. I got you premium dog food, too. I should have put a shirt on you and no <laughs> pants. If you see a roo on the street, run it over. Just kidding. Please drive carefully. That's stupid. That is stupid. So, honestly, I don't know. I think I think if, I, if you hit a kangaroo with your car, I would think that, like, I feel like that's going to fuck up you and the car and... The it, roo. I mean, like this one that they said was big was 200 pounds. That's probably like a really good sized deer. So yeah. it, it'll tear up your car, but it'd be like hitting a deer. I think here it wouldn't be like hitting a moose. Like if you, I feel like it'd be worse than hitting a deer because I feel I feel like you hit a If you you hit a kangaroo. I feel like there's a better chance it pulls you out that, of the car and tries to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think there's a better chance that like you hit the kangaroo and like it goes, you know, it, like 
you hit the kangaroo, it like rolls up on your hood and off the off your car, and you're like, oh shit, I shit a kangaroo. I think there's a better chance of that kangaroo all of a sudden just standing up and be like, you son of a bitch. I'm hop, walking hop, hop, here. Hop. I'm walking yeah. here. So I know I think are kangaroos still considered um nuisances in Australia? I have the- no idea. So, I have no idea. That's something I've never looked into because I don't plan on going. Mm-hmm. So here it says, while you are justified to be wary of Australia's large, look it up. Generally, they are skittish creatures who don't attack unless provoked. So I guess that's just the idea. But of what scared. provokes it? Which, again, the next picture they show is this dude holding this ring, uh, this kangaroo's tail. Yeah. What the? Well, I mean, obviously, that would provoke it. But, this like, explain sucks. to me what I what. What is considered provoking and not provoking a kangaroo? Because if like if there's a kangaroo on the road and then I stop and then he stops and then he looks at me, like what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to like honk the horn and be like, hey, mm. fucking. And he looks over at your wife. You're like, hey, Steve, get the fuck out of the road or whatever your name is. I don't know. Flexes and your wife is like, oh, he's got some big muscular. Yeah. Muscles. And now I'm like, oh, God damn it. Now Look I got to fucking pecs. Shit, now I gotta deal with this, and then you get out. Look of the at car. that tail. Oh my god, that's not its tail. But I mean, like, what's the other option? You just sit there and wait for it to fucking move? Like, what if it doesn't move? If yeah. you honk your horn at it, is that provoking it? Probably. It smashes both its hands on your hood. Yeah. It jumps up on your hood. And then it's like, bring it. Bring it. He's and then drunk. you're like, uh. Hey, you son of a bitch. Don't you know it's 8 a.m. on Tuesday? It's where I fucking walk. You get out. You get out of your fucking car. It's, it's, we're going to fight. Did you know yeah. I was running from here? <laughs> <laughs> the last thing it says is be careful out there. So Australia has a lot of animals that can kill you, and the kangaroo is no exception. However, by following some basic safety tips and respect our wildlife, you can be unharmed. Sean, that article Sucks. helped no, in no way not. whatsoever. Basically, it just said, hey, Hopefully you don't run into a kangaroo, but if you do, don't piss it off. Yeah, the best. Oh, thing if it you said... want to know how how to piss how to piss it off or not piss it off, eh? It's a crapshoot. What and what's crazy is the pictures they show. So they got like this early like nineteen twelve looking picture of this twelve uh-huh. year old boxing with a kangaroo. Yeah, see, and then they show you images. Of people doing the complete opposite of what the point of the article is. Hey, don't fight a kangaroo. Don't be like these guys. And they're like, and then you look at the pictures and you're like, what? 12 year old looks like he's about to throw down. Like maybe he could take it. Oh, this, nope. Kangaroo won. <laughs> this picture is kind of scary though. The, the, the article basically stems from this five year old who got attacked by a kangaroo. Oh shit. And I guess his dad was there to try to scare it away, but he's got some gnarly looking scratches and stuff on his back. Oh, uh. No, then, thank you. There's a picture of this dude that's got like a big bruise on his belly. But then, yeah, you've got this kangaroo being a dick kicking this person into the water, which is funny. <laughs> uh, this kid with a cell phone, like basically asking this kangaroo is like, hey, can I get your digits? And the kangaroo's like, fuck you. Yeah. And then this other one's swelling up, which looks like big buck. Fuck that. But yeah, it's crazy how they swell up too. like they they're like they're all about it. They're the dudes on Muscle Beach. Walking around showing you what's going on. Yeah, hundred percent. Nope, nope for me. Yeah, so we got Big Buck running around two oh nine. Stay away from Australia. Trying to hook and, up with Linda and Walt Disney apparently. Yeah. So how do you feel, Richard? How do you feel like as we talked about this? Do you feel like Australia is a place you want to visit? What are your Richard's um, closing thoughts that you can tie into that? Part? Uh, okay. So to wrap this up, um, I think we can both agree that. Walt Disney was a mean old man. Allegedly. And kind of kangaroos kangaroos should be respected and also feared. And don't go to Australia because again, like I feel like that's I I feel like that's the only advice you kind of get from that article. It's like, hey, don't go to where the kangaroos are because it's a crapshoot whether or not they get mad enough to punch you in the face. Yeah. It's like, guess what? You run away from that. You fall into some water. Guess what? Crocodile. Yep. You survive the crocodile. Guess what? Snake. Yep. Oh. Snake bites you in the fucking face. You survive oh, all look, those? Oh, look, there's a spider. Yeah. Eat your hand. Oh, God. You passed that. Guess what? You tripped over some leaves. Gimpy gimpy. Yep. And now you can't feel anything in your body and you're going crazy. Yep. Because the pain hurts so bad. 
that you just want to jump off a cliff. And then Welcome you jump to off Australia. A cliff. Yeah. Then you jump in a cliff and land in the water. And then a shark eats you. Yep. And then the shark gets the pain from the gimpy Ooh, gimpy. Goes nuts. And then the shark jumps up on the land. No, he swims to Amity. Yeah. The circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Richard. Well, as we are staying snug and tight in our homes away from Big Book. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping. Yes. Uh, visit our website, we're languagebros.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languagebro. Email us at bros at languagebros.com. You can like us on Facebook, and there are always a couple ways you can help spread the bromance. You can like, retweet, or share any of our stuff on social media, or go ahead and show our you know, show on Reddit. There's also all kinds of subreddits you can post our show on there. If you want, grab a little bit of LB merchandise at our T Public store. Just search for Language of Bromance. And if you want to take a giant step forward, join our Patreon account. It's www.patreon.com slash Language of Bromance. We'd like to thank Wendy and Aaron, as always, for being great patrons of our podcast. You the best. All right, Richard. Was there anything else before I close her out? Wait. Uh, uh, uh. What is it? Tiff said somebody's at the door that I need to go talk to. She's got a big smile on her face, too. Uh-oh. My name's Buck, and I like the party. Shark it out of the house. <laughs> the call's coming from inside the house. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the bros have this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And remember, don't be a why, unless it's going to Australia. Mm, be, be a, a why, why not. not. Stay safe out there. Watch out for ruse. My name's Buck, and I like to party. <laughs> I'm here to fuck somebody's wife. <laughs>